Hello and welcome to another Bespoke Unit Champagne review. In this video we shall be reviewing the one and only Veuve Clicquot Carte Jaune or Yellow Label. As with every champagne review you will be using the Bespoke Unit Champagne Sheet or Bux. Here is a uh, printed version which I've just printed out and started filling in with all the basic details. Uh, you can download your own version at home. If you head to the description below you'll find a link to download and print one of these so you can review your own champagnes or any other sparkling wine at home. Veuve Clicquot is somewhat of a legend in champagne. For a start, it's instantly recognisable with its orange labels. It's a champagne which is on a level with Bollinger and Mouette et Chandon. It's one of those giant premium brands uh, that are still relatively affordable when you're looking at their non-vintage cuvées. Uh, founded in 1772, it is now today part of the LVMH group and, and sells about 22 million bottles a year. It was founded by Barbe Nicole Ponsardin, who married her husband, who was Clicquot, so she was Barbe Nicole Clicquot, um, at 27 years old. Now her husband passed away when she was 27 and so she kept the Clicquot name and added Ponsardin and the champagne became Veuve Clicquot which means Widow Clicquot or its full name Veuve Clicquot Ponsardin keeping her maiden name in there. Uh, people told her she would fail her um, father-in-law, or ex-father-in-law, uh, wanted to take the land away for her because it was a profession not fit for a lady. Uh, but she proved them wrong and in five years she uh, was producing 100,000 bottles a year. In fact, she was quite renowned uh, in the champagne industry and um, Napoleonic, Napoleonic officers would come to her estate and they would drink champagne and they'd entertain her by using a sword to knock off the, uh, the cork from the bottle which is now a practice known as sabering. She became so well known, so legendary at the time that she became referred to as la grande dame de la champagne which means the great lady of champagne but la champagne in the feminine form means the region whereas le champagne is the drink. So make of that what you will, but she was the great lady of champagne. So before this uh, warms up, I deliberately called it a little extra so I could do this video without it warming up uh, badly. Let's uh, give it an open. If you've been to bespokeunit.com, you'll notice that we offer an extensive guide on how to properly open a bottle of champagne. This is something that you can try at home. It's quite simple. Uh, so we've taken off the, the foil and we're going to do six semi-clockwise, semi, uh, semi-turns counterclockwise. We'll just loosen the cage or the muesli as it's known. We'll then drape a cloth over it and we will then not turn the cork, we'll turn the uh, base and we'll keep it at a 45 degree angle. Being at a 45 degree angle means that if you do it like this, the pressure going against gravity will come shooting up. But turning it at a slight angle means, well, you won't get it everywhere if you do this, but the uh, pressure will be pushing against here and make it a lot easier to open. And we want to resist against a pop. We don't want it to pop. We want it to give off a whisper of effervescence. So you resist as you turn with your hand holding the bottle, be your left hand or the right hand. Keep a glass close just in case, you don't know how this might end up. And remember that when, when it does pop, well you're not going to be holding it anymore with your left hand, so your, uh, with your cork hand, so the bottle hand is going to have to take the weight. There we go, that is perfect. And when you pour a slight bit of etiquette is you don't want the bottle neck to touch the glass. The reason is that this bottle has probably been lying in a cellar somewhere which is full of dust and you'll be getting dust into the glass which is unpleasant. I'm going to just let this air and we're going to enjoy admiring the robe and the bell latch. So the first thing we'll do 
Let's get a, a white background, a wall or a piece of paper like this uh, spell unit champagne uh, sheet. And we're going to compare the row. We're going to see how it looks in terms of hue. And we're looking at something which is a mid gold, very deep gold. No, not deep gold, very mid gold, rich in color. It's very clear, very clear. And we're also going to look at the bubbles. So I'm gonna actually fill out the champagne sheet with you. Uh, here's my pen. And I'm going to say that we're looking at a mid gold robe with a very clear clarity. Not completely clear, we still want a little bit of something in there. And now we're going to not count the bubbles, we're going to look at their size uh, and their energy. The bubbles are important not because they, not just because they're pleasant in the mouth, but because they actually release uh, the aromatic compounds in a wine. They carry them from the bottom and they bring them out, which means you don't have to swirl a glass of champagne. Completely pointless. The bubbles will release all those uh, aromas, which I can actually smell from here, because these are very energetic uh, bubbles. So in terms of energy, they're very lively, quite gra very graceful. Uh, so they're not super fast, but they still they're very they're very lively. You can you can feel that there is some some force behind there. And in terms of size, they are small, but not overly refined when I mean, they start off tiny but you know they snowball towards the top but here we have a couple of stems uh, coming up and they're very very fine indeed so now that we've had a look at this the next step is to give it a sniff so turning the uh, glass at a slight angle because smelling it like this you're not going to get much if you turn it at an angle and you put your nose in there, you're going to really get this bouquet of flavours. Mm. I confess this is a little bit colder than I prefer. Uh, we'll talk about temperature later, but I think because this is quite a mature champagne, these have been uh, aged, the yellow label, the Carte Jaune, has been aged for a minimum of three years, by the way, which is less than, well, no, sorry, it is much more than the mandatory 18 months. So here I'm detecting um, Mirabel plums, which are these little plums that you get in France, and uh, peaches with dried fruit and spices in there. Now that was the second nose, a sort of persisted nose. It's quite intense, quite not overly complex. It's intricate, but it's not like, it's not got complexity. We, we've, we're still around like four different notes I think I picked out. But it's lucid and the dried fruit and a little bit of nuts in there, uh, that is um, quite enjoyable. So we're here. In terms of diversity, well, we've got four wide notes. So the fruit and nut is actually quite enjoyable in the second note. And as, of course, are the Mirabel plums and uh, peaches. So the next step is naturally to give this a try. Cheers. Mm. So the first thing worthy of note here is that we're looking at something that's very, very dry, very um, tart and creamy. There's a very, the, the perlage is very subtle. You know, it looks quite, quite powerful here on the outside, but when you have it on your tongue, it becomes very creamy, very moussey, which is very pleasant and actually lets those aromas burst in your mouth. In fact, I found that the palate was much stronger than I expected. 
after having tried the nose. Um, so we have this creaminess, we open on, um, I could pick out a little bit of citrus, but not very sweet citrus because it's very tart, very dry. We were more on the uh, grapefruit, sort of blood orange side of things. It's very, very, um, very acid, acidic, but very flavoursome at the same time, with a little bit of that Mirabel plum that we detected earlier in the nose. It was quite intense, and in terms of yeast, we were quite strong, which was something that I detected from the heart of the flavour. So I started to get notes of biscuit and that cream I mentioned uh, towards the heart. And then as we started to drive into the finish, there was kind of a, it wasn't, it wasn't overtly yeasty, but it was certainly there, you know, it was toast, a little bit of brioche, uh, some nuts, again, as we detected actually in the nose and a tiny sort of mineral finish but it really although we had this minerality which you kind of hope this kind of limestone flavor it really concentrated on the gourmand side of things it's very toasty very nutty uh, and with this sort of creamy long finish uh, in terms of maturity uh, I'm gonna have to try again to check that certainly one of the more mature non-vintage uh, wines. I know I mentioned that it's been matured for three years and I'm not letting that um, affect my judgment. I do find it to be sort of a much more characterful and more interesting um, non-vintage uh, entry cuvee. Uh, and in terms of length, flavor length, well, as I'm talking to you, I can still taste the cream and the nuts at the back of the palate. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see how long that endures, but I have a good feeling this might last a while. Let's quickly cover the overall experience. Uh, firstly, let's look at the label. It's hard to criticize such a timeless and well-known label. The yellow label, although it's more orange, um, but the carte jaune is really quite something. It's elegant, yet it's simplistic. It still has set, uh, notes of modernity in it with its uh, sans serif uh, font here and with Veuve Clicquot Ponsardin's signature scrawling across the middle. It also shows very proudly that it has a ro royal warrant, uh, which is still the case today, I believe. Uh, let's look at the cork and plaque. Now the plaque is excellent. Uh, I will take a photo of this to be much closer and easier to see for the written review, but the plaque is a portrait of the great dame herself. It's very nice. Uh, I mean, she doesn't look amused, but I'm sure after a couple of these, we would have a smile back on her face right away. In terms of the cork, well the cork isn't taking its shape back. It's not stained at all, uh, which means it hasn't experienced any heat spikes, although there are a couple of little lines down here. So maybe it did get a little bit of temperature at one point. In any case, I can't taste it. And uh, although it's, it's not getting its shape back, which to me suggests it has been cooled for quite a while. So maybe that has positively affected the flavor, depending on the storage conditions, although I always store mine in a temperature of around 10 to 15 degrees, very consistent in the dark. Um, finally, for the occasion, this is a champagne you could use anytime, anywhere. You could use it casually among friends, it would be a bit of a treat, but it worked absolutely fine at a barbecue, maybe a bit OTT, but if you want to treat yourself, go for it. Uh, this is something that you can enjoy almost anywhere. Uh, restaurants would be quite pricey, but a nice meal would be fantastic. And then even all the way to a formal occasion, a gala, uh, a wedding, or um, a diplomatic event, this is probably a perfect choice, if a little bit of a pricey one. That leads me to value for money. Um, the value for money is, is good. Uh, I think it's a perfectly fair price for what it is. It's one of the most significant brands in France uh, and in the world. 
Um, although I think you know that there are just as good champagnes for less, but it's when you pay for a champagne, you're also paying for the brand value. Don't forget it. There's some absolutely exquisite champagnes that we've reviewed if you check on Bespoke Unit or on the other videos on this channel that are much cheaper but aren't as well known. So it, it's really, champagne is much like designer brands. It's not like wine. It's very interesting the way the dynamic works. Anyway, in terms of pricing, uh, I live in France and I got this for around 40 euros. Uh, when I was checking for the best prices and hunting around, um, the best price I could find was between 50 and 55 dollars uh, US. If you check the link below, you'll find uh, what I managed to get uh, from our trusted retailer and at the best price I could possibly find, that was $55. If you do a conversion, $40 today, uh, the time of recording this video, is around, I'm uh, no, sorry, 40 euros today at the time of recording this video is around $48. So that makes a price difference of around $8, which is very good. Um, in France, uh, well, in France, champagne will always be cheaper than the US uh, because it's a domestic product. But when it's exported, it normally add, you can expect to add about 50%, uh, sometimes more, uh, sometimes a little less to the price. However, this is only seven dollars more expensive in America than it is in France, which is actually almost unheard of. So if you want something as close to the sort of recommended price of origin, this is actually a really good choice. Before we reach our conclusion, let's talk about pairings. Now this is a very dry and very mature champagne, so it's something that would be, it has more character. It is creamier, it has much more to say um, than your than a typical non-vintage. So, in terms of pairings, you can look at something. You can use this much more for the more characterful uh, dishes. So, in terms of starters, we could look at easily pairing this uh, with antipasto, caviar, or fish eggs would be a great choice. Foie gras, uh, duck liver pate, uh, or goose liver, technically. Um, not fruit, melon, things like this. This is too dry. It would just you get this acidic like sort of orange juice and toothpaste a reaction in your mouth, it wouldn't be pleasant. Oysters, this is very good because oysters are very salty, very smooth, very creamy. This would be an excellent pairing. Uh, pate in general, uh, soup. Barbecue cured meat would be an excellent choice because it has this character, they pair quite well. Curry, fish, noodles, pasta, pastries. Uh, these will all go, go very well as well, as well as maybe lighter dishes such as sushi could probably be fine, but I don't think you'd be able to get the best from this with something so light and refreshing. Uh, cheeses would go well as well. Maybe blue, maybe not, but definitely you go uh, hard and soft cheeses. Uh, I would skip this for dessert. This wouldn't work for dessert. It's far too dry, far too tart. Uh, far too acidic, it would just be very unpleasant, like I said earlier, toothpaste and orange juice. Uh, but for aperitifs, it would be fantastic, bread, fry, uh, bread sticks, french fries, nuts, olives, popcorn, potato chips, salad and tapenade. With regards to tobacco, those who like uh, a smoke while they drink, whether it be cigarettes or um, uh, cigars, this would go well with cigarettes, most alcohol does, uh, I, you know, I'm not recommending you smoke, uh, enjoy responsibly, but uh, it does. It would go quite well with the cigarette. But I'm going to try in the next video I'm going to record, which uh, will release shortly after this one has been published. Um, I'm going to try it with a cigar, and I think that this will go quite well with a light, mild or medium cigar, but nothing too full or too characterful because it doesn't have the same character as a vintage champagne. Uh, recommended serving temperature, I'd say you are better off enjoying this at 10 degrees, uh, which is a around 50 Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, although champagne is generally recommended around 8 degrees Celsius, which is something like 47.3 Fahrenheit. Um, I think because this is character, you have it too cool, you'll miss out, it'll taste uh, a little flat, it would lack that oomph 
that you would hope from a uh, from a an interesting character for champagne. So what is there to say about Veuve Clicquot that hasn't already been said? For us, it is our current favourite of the big designer brand, easy to find, affordable champagnes at $55 or 40 euros. This is an excellent choice. Uh, we have, it's currently featured at, as one of our best or the best champagne to buy under $50. Um, it is a very pleasant, very characterful. This is a champagne that is for people that have a more developed palate, that want to enjoy something that isn't just fresh and isn't just bubbly, but actually has something going on in there. I'm Charles Philippe, that's all from me today. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and give us a little comment if you have any thoughts or any questions about your experiences with Veuf Clicquot. And if you like champagne, don't forget that at bespokeunit.com forward slash champagne, we have a plethora of guys on serving, drinking, tasting, and its history and method. Uh, otherwise, don't forget that in the description, there is our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow those and head to bespokeunit.com to discover more of what we offer. Until the next time, take care. <laughs>